Hello Infoperson, this is Anton and welcome to another day in the universe. And today I actually wanted to share something, I guess, kind of incredible that just happened a few days ago. As the video title suggests, someone decided to name a minor planet after me. And honestly, I'm still kind of trying to wrap my head around this, but cool, I guess. But yeah, that's right. Somewhere out there, somewhere above your head, there's another Anton Petrov in orbit. And that one is actually going to be orbiting for billions of years to come. So yeah, you're not getting rid of me that easily. But because I don't really like making things about myself, I really wanted to use this opportunity to discuss the idea behind named asteroids and discuss this idea of humanity connecting to the cosmos by leaving our little marks on the entire universe. And that's because there is a bit of a science and a bit of a history behind this naming tradition. And so let's not make this about me, let's explore this topic together. But really to start, I wanted to show you this first. This is asteroid Balaam. And technically if you look closer, you'll see that this is a triple asteroid. Three asteroids orbiting one another. One of few such known asteroids out there. And the reason I wanted to start with this is because this asteroid was actually named after the person who decided to name the asteroid after me. And he definitely deserves a much longer video just because of his achievements in astronomy. He didn't actually name this after himself, someone else did years ago, for reasons I wanted to briefly mention right now. David Bellum is one of the most prolific discoverers in astronomy when it comes to finding objects out there. He's a Canadian astronomer associated with the University of Victoria, and to date he's discovered over 600 different asteroids and over a thousand different supernova. Not to mention comets and various nova as well. And so one of these asteroids, one of these 600 asteroids, he decided to name after me. Yay! But you might be wondering, how exactly does an asteroid get named after someone? And what exactly is involved? Well, it turns out that you cannot just pay for it. As a matter of fact, this is one of those things that, I guess, cannot be purchased with money. At least for now. Here, when the asteroid is first discovered, they're initially given a provisional designation. In this case, this asteroid is known as 2003-OA-34. It was discovered by Balam and his team in 2003, while the rest of the code provides information about when during the year it was found and its order of discovery within that period. But that's sort of difficult to remember and is also not super catchy. That's where the naming comes in. But not every asteroid can receive a name. First, its orbit needs to be well established, which actually does require a lot of additional observations, usually spanning at least four oppositions. That's basically when Earth passes between the Sun and the asteroid. And once we know its orbit very well, it then receives its permanent number. In this case, this asteroid was 660,931. And yeah, that means that over 600,000 asteroids have already been officially confirmed. But at this point, the discoverer has to make a choice. Either leave it as a number, or possibly suggest a name for it. And these naming rights usually last 10 years. And so during these 10 years, the discoverer is allowed to submit potential suggestions with a very short citation explaining the reason for the name. And there's only one organization in the world that does all of this. And yeah, it's not NASA and not ESA. It's known as Working Group Small Body Nomenclature of the International Astronomical Union. A small team of professional astronomers that basically reviews all of the submissions and makes sure that everything's correct. And so, for example, some of the guidelines suggest that the name has to be 16 or less characters, it also has to be pronounceable in some kind of a language, it has to be non-offensive and not too similar to existing names. And once approved, it becomes officially published in the WGSBN bulletin that's usually released a few times a year. Here are actually some of the recent ones. And it just so happens that in this recent bulletin, that's where you're going to find my name as well. Here there are actually quite a few different named asteroids, but it's this one here that we're going to be discussing. But before that, okay, so why did we even start naming asteroids to begin with? I mean, obviously it is kind of cool, but how did it all begin? Well, here you might get a bit of a clue if you find the first named asteroid. One series. And that's where this tradition kind of began. This dates back to early 19th century, when some of the early telescopes started to become good enough to actually now see relatively large minor planets. And so once these first objects started to become discovered, quite a few astronomers believed that these were planets. For obvious reasons. They looked like planets. They were spherical, they were orbiting somewhere between Mars and Jupiter, and they did possess quite a lot of planetary properties. And so the very first, Ceres, 
discovered in 1801 by Giuseppe Piazzi, was initially called Ceres Ferdinandi, but because that was kind of long, eventually the Ferdinandi part disappeared. But as more and more of these objects were discovered, one, two, three, and so on, astronomers realized that, uh, yeah, maybe we're going to be having trouble here, because it looks like the solar system seems to have quite a few planets out there. And so some astronomers, such as William Herschel, realized that maybe this is actually a new celestial body. He named them asteroids, or star-like. Mostly because in his telescope, they actually did appear as tiny stars as opposed to planets. They did not show a visible disk. And that's because they were just a little bit too small. And though some of the earliest asteroids were given classical mythology names, such as Ceres, Pallas, Juno, and Vesta, and they even received their own symbols, just like planets, as more and more asteroids were discovered, eventually this became a little bit too much. First of all, there were no more symbols. And second of all, trying to remember all of them became a little bit challenging. And so asteroid 20 Massalia, discovered in 1852, or 51 years after Ceres, became the first to not have any symbol, and officially became the first asteroid, with the previous 20 eventually receiving the same title. And so once it became clear that these are not planets and seem to be actually new types of bodies, around the same time, the practice of naming asteroids after people started to pick up as well. And while the first official asteroid to be named after a real person was 45 Eugenia. An intriguing triple asteroid that even has a moon around it, initially discovered in 1857 and named after Empress Eugenie de Montillo, the wife of Napoleon III. And here it's actually somewhat interesting, but at first all of the names of asteroids were given feminine designations. In other words, all of the initial asteroids were named after women. And even though the first man to have an asteroid named after him was Alexander von Humboldt, his name was actually feminized into 54 Alexandra. And so technically, I guess, if this tradition was still alive, this would now be known as Antonia, or I guess something similar to that. But this tradition officially stopped with the 334th discovery, when the first ever asteroid was named after a city, 334 Chicago. And so following this, the naming convention became very liberal. Many started to be named after scientists, artists, writers, musicians, educators, fictional characters, and I guess, YouTubers. But the underlying question is, why? Why does this matter? Why is it significant to name an asteroid after someone? Well, unlike stars, which are typically not officially named after people, even though there are certain shady services online that basically offer you to purchase a name for a star, asteroid names are officially recognized by the international scientific community. As a matter of fact, here I am on the NASA website. And so technically this becomes a kind of a permanent scientific record. And so on the one hand, this is a significant honor, but more importantly, it represents recognition of contributions to science, education, or culture. It does create a kind of a cosmic legacy that's supposed to outlast human lifetime. And mostly because these objects are going to be orbiting for billions of years. But for science communicators like myself, in essence it acknowledges the role all of us play in making astronomy and other sciences more accessible. And so here it's a recognition that science communication matters. And that helping people understand and appreciate the wonders of the universe is a valuable contribution. Something that was also recently discussed by Brady Haran, who makes these wonderful interviews with various scientists, and who also presented this, the YouTuber Asteroids. And so beyond the personal significance, this also creates a kind of a prominent connection between astronomical objects and human culture. Think of it as a bridge between the cosmic and the human, the vastness of space, and our own stories and achievements. And well, as of 2025, over 22,000 minor planets, or asteroids, have been named out of more than 1.2 million discovered so far, with each name telling a story about a scientist, an artist, or even some kind of a character in a book that left an important mark on a society. Interestingly though, his asteroid is massive. But what about this one? Well, from what we know so far about this asteroid, first of all, it does seem to be pretty safe and in a stable orbit in the asteroid belt. It takes approximately 1800 days or almost 5 years to complete one orbit around the Sun and goes between about 2.57 to 321 astronomical units away from the Sun. And it never really comes closer than 1.5 AU to planet Earth. And so this asteroid is just quietly minding its own business out there in the asteroid belt. 
but it is also kind of large, at least 1.2 kilometers, but possibly as big as 2.8 kilometers across. Here's how this asteroid compares to Mount Everest in terms of the overall proportions. And intriguingly, an asteroid of somewhat similar size potentially resulted in a major impact a few million years ago, and we've actually talked about this not so long ago in the video in the description. But even in some of the most powerful telescopes, such as the Mauna Kea Observatory in Hawaii, it just looks like a tiny black dot. But because this dot was moving, this is essentially how this asteroid was initially discovered in 2003. And so since the original discovery, astronomers observed this asteroid at least 250 additional times, mostly to confirm its exact orbit and to determine that it's going to stay where it's currently orbiting for a pretty long time. One of the links in the description kind of shows you where the orbit is and how it compares to a lot of other objects in the solar system. But having said all of this, I honestly still cannot believe this even happened. When I first started making videos about math, astronomy, sciences, and even random videos about history, I never imagined that one day there's going to be an actual asteroid named after me. And it's even stranger to think that once I'm gone, and once maybe even YouTube is gone, after all of my videos have disappeared from the internet, there's still going to be this chunk of rock that's technically still designated with my name, at least for as long as IAU or International Astronomical Union exists. But at the same time, this is really not a personal recognition at all, because in this case, this particular rock represents all of you in some sense as well. The wonderful community that was created here over the years, with basically over 1.4 million wonderful minds joining me every single day to explore the universe. And so in some sense, this symbolic naming represents the power of science communication and education to inspire wonder and curiosity. But at the same time, this also connects to the ancient human tradition of looking up into the night skies and finding some kind of a connection with the cosmos. And so there you have it, a story of previously unknown asteroid 660931, a mountain-sized space rock orbiting somewhere between Mars and Jupiter, but also a story of how humans connect to the universe through the tradition of naming celestial objects. Which kind of reminds us that even though our knowledge of the universe is slowly expanding every single year, as we explore new mysteries and as we find new things out there, we bring our human stories, human names and human culture with us. And so, as always, thank you for enjoying this video and all of the previous videos from years before, and maybe subscribe, maybe like this video, or come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon where you can actually find quite a few videos you might have not seen before, consider joining the channel membership that has a lot of other footage, or maybe by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. And so until next time, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.